In this video, we're going to take a look at the three most important things that you can do as soon as you get a new Synology NAS. Now, this is not going to be an extensive video in the sense that we're going to go through every setting you should do. For that, I have an article and I'll leave that in the description of the video. The goal of that article is really to walk you through the entire setup process of a Synology NAS. And what we're looking at in this specific video is included in that. However, I think it's easiest to just split it out and set it up so that you can quickly watch this video and make the few changes that you have to, which will have a huge impact if you were to ever run into any issues on your NAS. So we're gonna get right into it. And the first thing that we're gonna take a look at is specific Synology DSM settings. Now these settings can be found in the control panel. And the first one we're gonna take a look at is the IP address that your Synology NAS is using. Now, if you can open up the control panel, select network, and then go to network interface, you're gonna see a network interface for every single network cable you have plugged in. Now, some NAS devices have two ports, some have four ports. The point here is that every single cable you have plugged in, you will have a different IP address set for it. Now, the important point that you have to make here is that you have to ensure that at least one of these is using a static IP address. Now, there's two ways that you can accomplish that. The first is by setting a DHCP reservation on your router. That will ensure that the IP address of your Synology NAS will never change. However, a lot of people aren't sure of how to do that, and there is a way to do it in your Synology NAS as well. So if you edit any of the network interfaces that you have, you can set a static IP address here. The way that you can do that is by using the manual configuration, and all of these settings for the most part can stay the same. If you wanna change the IP address, you can do that here, but all of these other settings are grabbed by DHCP. So for almost 99.9% .9 of cases, they're probably gonna be fine. However, if you did wanna change the IP address, you can do that here. As soon as you save this, what that's gonna ensure is that every time your Synology NAS is turned on, it attempts to use this IP address. As long as your router doesn't hand that IP address out to a different device, you'll always ensure that this Synology NAS is accessible on this IP address. Now, if you wanted to, you can do that for every single network interface that you have. However, if you have multiple plugged in and you have a switch that supports it, I really recommend just setting up link aggregation. I have a video, I'll leave a pop-up for that now, and I have an article, I'll put it in the description of the video. But link aggregation has a few benefits, the main one being automatic failover, as well as kind of opening up two different lanes to your Synology NAS, so you'll have double the bandwidth, not double the speed, but double the bandwidth. There's a whole video for that though, I don't wanna get into it, I just wanna make the point that if you have multiple network cables plugged into the same switch, it's probably a good idea to look into link aggregation. So that's the first setting. The second setting is gonna be in the security section. So if you select security and then you go to protection, just ensure that auto block and denial of service protection is both enabled. This will ensure that if there are a certain number of login attempts within a certain number of minutes, the IP address will automatically get blocked. Now you can set those IP addresses to automatically unblock after a certain amount of time if you'd like, but the key here is really that top section which just ensures that the IP addresses will get blocked if they attempt to log in too many times within a certain period of time. Now the third section we're gonna take a look at is UPnP. Now UPnP, if you're setting up a new Synology NAS, should not be enabled by default. However, if you're watching this video and you've already set up your Synology NAS, you wanna make sure that you check this setting here. So if you select external access and router configuration, if you have anything listed in this section, you have UPnP enabled. UPnP stands for Universal Plug and Play, and what that means is that your Synology NAS can open ports on your router without you having to really do anything. You would come in here, you would select a port, and your NAS is gonna attempt to connect to your router and automatically port forward on your behalf. Now this is dangerous because it's not clear to a lot of people what exactly happens when you have UPnP enabled. Now I have UPnP disabled on my router and if you have a router and you're comfortable accessing it, you should go in and ensure that UPnP is disabled. That's the best way to protect against this because your NAS is not the only device that can use UPnP, but we're only looking at it in the context of a NAS. Um, the reason is mainly because you don't want ports being opened on your router without you actually doing it. If you're comfortable exposing a service on your NAS, 
you should be comfortable accessing your router and port forwarding it through the router interface. So the main point here is if you have anything in this list, you should delete it and you should log into your router and see exactly what's port forwarded to your NAS. If you haven't set this up yet, don't. It's in your best interest if you want to expose anything to do it on the router side so you know exactly what's being opened and exactly how to disable it if you'd like. You don't want services automatically doing it on your behalf if you don't have to. The final setting we're gonna take a look at is in the login portal section and it's the DSM ports for HTTP and HTTPS. You should change these from default. I specifically mentioned UPnP first because what ends up happening to a lot of people is they'll come in here and they will set up UPnP indirectly. They didn't even mean to. And what happens is these default ports will then get port forwarded on their router. And then they have no idea that their NAS is accessible by the whole world. So changing these ports, if you don't have UPnP enabled is really not going to do much because it's behind the firewall. You don't have much to worry about, but due to the amount of bot attacks that target these ports, it's just in your best interest to change them. You could change them to whatever you want, not necessary, but I'd recommend that you do. The other thing you can do is automatically redirect HTTP connections to HTTPS. This will just ensure that all of your traffic is always encrypted. I definitely recommend using the HTTPS port and this will ensure that you do. Now, like I said earlier, there are a bunch of other DSM settings that you can configure and I'll leave an article in the description of the video that you can follow along which explains all of the settings and why I suggest that you change them. But these are what I classify as the most important DSM settings that you must change or confirm when you get a new Synology NAS. Now we're quickly gonna take a look at two applications that I think have to be installed on every NAS as well. And the first is snapshot replication. So snapshots, assuming you're using the BTRFS file system, will allow you to freeze files at a point in time. If you have a shared folder set up, which if you're up to this point, I'm imagining that you do, and you're using BTRFS, you should have snapshots enabled. It will allow you to restore a file from yesterday if you accidentally deleted it, and in very extreme situations, restore an entire shared folder if you had to to yesterday's version. Now this is not a backup, but it's kind of an insurance policy. I set it up for every single one of my folders. I set different retention policies on each of them, and I'd really recommend that you do. I have an entire video, I'll leave a pop-up for that now, but this is a really simple application. If you just select the snapshot section and you edit the settings on a specific folder, you can go in there, set a time, set a retention period, and every single day at that time for that number of versions, a snapshot will exist. So just by setting this up, you're protecting yourself a lot more than you did if you didn't have it enabled. Now going along with that, if you set up a Synology NAS, you have to ensure that that NAS is backed up. So hyper backup is the best way that you can back up your Synology NAS. And it's mostly because you can back it up to a ton of different services, whether they are local or in the cloud. So you have to keep in mind that you don't have to back up everything on your NAS. You should back up though the extremely important information. So even if you have to just use Google Drive and you only have the free tier, which is I think 15 gigabytes of uh, cloud storage for free, at least it allows you to back up 15 gigs of your important data. Without it, you're really hoping that nothing goes wrong. Now there are tons of different ways that you can set this up. You can use remote NAS devices. You can use rsync servers if you want. You can use various different cloud services. You don't have to pick a specific one. Just pick whichever one works for you for the amount of data that you need to back up. There's not a better or a worse option. I have my preferences, but if you go through this, I have a full article I'll leave in the description of the video that explains how to set this up. But the point is that you're going to be backing up your Synology NAS. You can encrypt the data if you want, and you don't have to worry because you know that at minimum, your most important data on your Synology NAS is backed up to a cloud server. And if you ever had to restore it, you can. Now there are a ton of other things that you can do with new Synology NAS devices. And I really would recommend that you explore it because it's a lot more powerful than you probably think it is. And you can do tons and tons of different things. But this really, in my opinion, will give you a good baseline on some of the more important features that will ensure basic NAS security and basic data security. 
So I'm hopeful that this video helped you guys out. If it did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments of the video. And if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks guys.